We have data broadcast Pokemon, so let's discuss them. Pokemon! 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 Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Benzel, and welcome to another Pokemon X, Y, and Z anime discussion. Today we're just going to solely talk about the data broadcast Pokemon, what it could mean in regards to the episode, and a little bit of discussion for each of the episodes. So hopefully this video will not be too long. So anyway, let's jump right in. Now we do have data broadcast Pokemon for the Serena Becomes Ash, but it's pretty obvious what that data broadcast Pokemon is if you know what the episode is, and it is Pikachu. So we don't really need to discuss it because it's obvious why it's Pikachu. We already know the role of Pikachu. We have Ash's Pikachu, the Punk Rocker's Pikachu, and of course we know that it's because the Punk Rocker likes Pikachu, has a Pikachu-themed <laughs> guitar. Pikachu, 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 Pikachu. So anyway, we're just going to move past that and move on to the next one. Now the next one, of course, is in relation to the Elan versus Ash battle, and we have Dewblade. Now, a lot of people in the forums everywhere has been, has been, have been suggesting that it belongs to Sawyer. Since last time we saw Sawyer, he had a Honich. Huh. My problem is adding Sawyer into this particular episode causes a lot of criticisms and a lot of complaints from me because then it would be an exact carbon copy of the previous episode that aired like 10 weeks ago, I believe, somewhere around there. It was like 10 episodes ago that we saw the first Ash vs. Alana episode. So having a carbon copy of that particular episode does not bode well for the episode, despite my response in the uh, Clement Bonnie marriage review episode that I did. So I'm not really sure I'm looking forward to Carbon Copy episode. The thing is, and the reason why I don't really like this is because it kind of implies to me that they couldn't fit Sawyer into any other kind of episode. That doesn't make any sense to me. It's like they couldn't come up with a decent plot to have Sawyer, one of Ash's rivals, having his own episode and has to piggyback the episode that Alana is in. You know, and, and, and that's great. It, you know, it, it's great that they're giving Sawyer some time. The problem is we shouldn't just have Ash only battling Sawyer as it pertains to Alana. The other issue is... So that means that we should see the other rivals as well. Trevor, Tierno, some random new trainer that we'll see in the Pokemon League. These are all characters that we should already be seeing in these type of episodes if there needs to be a battle. There doesn't need to be Sawyer piggybacking on an episode that has Alon in it and Ash Greninja in it. Even though... Ash Greninja and or Greninja and Sceptile have a rivalry. Kind of see what I'm saying here? It, it doesn't really make any sense, especially when Sawyer's appearance means nothing in regards to the rest of the episode. In the previous episode, Sawyer just left without any particular reason. He he just said goodbye. And, and then it cut over to Ash versus Lon, and that's kind of why I'm bitter. If Sawyer is just going to be a plot convenience, then he doesn't need to be piggybacking this particular episode. So that's, particular, that's that particular episode, so let's move on to the next one. The next one, of course, is the Phantom episode, and it actually has Avalug in it, which is actually surprising, which means we might be dealing with that route or whatever that has Trevenant in it. I don't remember what it's called, so it might be why we're getting a Phantom episode here rather than earlier in the series. 
and so Wolfric's appearance means that he'll show up with an Avalug, probably to blast Team Rocket off to Kingdom Come. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, hey, wait a minute, Wolfric, and I already said my thoughts on this, but in the hypothetical possibility that capture speculation would be legitimate or a possibility, people are like, well, Wolfric's appearance means that Phantom is gonna, isn't going to be captured. Here's the thing. In Berg's debut, Ash caught a Sawaddle. So Wolfric doesn't detract, nor does Wolfric's appearance add anything to capture speculation. So that's pretty much all I want to say in regards to that, so let's move to the next episode. The next episode, of course, is Ash vs. Diantha, and the data broadcast Pokemon is Snorlax, which probably means that at this particular point, we will be getting into the Pokemon Village, which, if you know in X and Y, was that special area near Snowbell City. So it seems that I, what I think is going to happen is they're going to see Snorlax in the beginning of the episode, maybe run into Diantha or like Wolfric is with them and he goes and does his thing or whatever and then runs into Diantha and that leads to whatever's going on. So that's what I think is the thing. So it's just going to probably be a short appearance of Snorlax and the episode will most definitely be about Mega Gardeva versus Ash Greninja. So that's that particular episode. Except I also think Wolfric will appear in that episode as well in a minor appearance, you know, probably in the beginning of the episode and then disappears until maybe the end of the episode when they may reach Snowbell City. But regardless, let's move on to the next episode. Now, we don't have a title, of course. The rest are just data broadcast Pokemon, but we will talk about what it could mean. So the next data broadcast Pokemon is Abomasnow, which probably most likely means that this is Snowbell's gym. This might be a gym battle. And Ash will probably be battling Wolfric in this particular episode. Now the problem that I have with this, and I kind of was a little too extreme in the forums as well as my thoughts on the other episode that I will discuss, but it doesn't look like this is going to be very exciting because it's just a single episode. Now, I I know it was wrong of me to expect a two-parter for the final gym, any final gym of any particular region, since I think there was only one, and that was against Juan, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't know if Claire counts, because even though that was a different episode, it wasn't one continuous match, so I'm not really sure if that really counts. Uh, third gen, of course, was with Juan, and that definitely had the two-parter. There was not nothing with Volkner, and Roxy was a two-parter, now that I think about it. So uh, it might be wrong to think that it is a two-parter, but my problem, of course, is unfortunately... It seems like the episode just might be a 2 v versus 2, and I don't think I really discussed this, but based on the op uh, the upcoming episodes preview, what I don't like is the appearance that it's probably just going to be a 2 versus 2 Now, a lot of people have come up with ideas of how it's not a 2v2. The only problem is why, if you were going to make a preview of the last gym battle and it is not a two versus two why would you give us scenes that mirror the gym battle with Valerie I'm not kidding it was a two versus two with Valerie Halucha and Ta Fletchender versus Sylveon and Spritzy so now it's Talonflame versus Avalug and Halucha versus Abomasnow why are why is that what you're going to put in the upcoming episodes preview if there was going to be another pokemon why would you hide it you know it, i mean hypothetically what if it was like phantom then 
maybe I'd be a little bit more understanding. But if it's Pikachu, Greninja, or even Moivern, there's no reason for that. I'm pretty sure... I mean, I can't entirely sure when we got the upcoming episodes preview, but I'm pretty sure it was after Noivern evolved, I think. I'm pretty sure. I, I could be wrong, but even if Noibat hadn't evolved yet, we already knew Noibat was going to evolve, so there was no reason to hide it. But are you telling me that you wanted to make it look as boring as possible? And by boring, I mean there's nothing unique about it. There has been literally no change since Valerie to now, except Fletchender evolving and learning Brave Bird. That's it. Halucha hasn't learned any new moves, hasn't learned any new techniques. Talonflame technically hasn't done anything new since its gym battle against Olympia. And not much since the gym battle against Valerie, except Evolving and Brave Bird. So, are you telling me that that's what you want to hype up the last gym battle? You know, I mean, if it's Pikachu, if Pikachu somehow is the third Pokemon potentially, and it is a three versus three, maybe I could be a little bit more understanding why it was just Halucha and Talonflame. The only problem that I have, of course, is why would you treat the last gym battle this way? You know, I know Talonflame and Halucha actually do make sense to be in this gym battle, but I would think you would put the stakes a little bit higher and maybe have Ash use Noivern and have Noivern being in the preview. See, Talonflame makes sense because it's part fire. Halucha makes sense because each and every one of Halucha's moves are super effective against Obama Snow, especially. And especially Flying Press. Flying Press is four times effective against the Bomba Snow. It's like a fire type for a Bomba Snow, only not quite like that. So it's like because Flying Press is a fighting type move with flying attributes, the fighting will take care of the ice and the flying type will take out the grass. And since none of those other types resist fighting or flying, or yeah, fighting or flying, then it's going to do four times. So I can understand why Halucha was being used. But you're not going to use Noivern, and if you are going to use Noivern, you're not going to showcase it at all. That's why I think that it's going to be a very boring battle. It could have nice visuals, it could have nice tactics and nice strategies and everything of that nature, and I'm sure it'll be a very decent gym battle. But in regards to the final 8th gym battle, unless we get confirmation that Noivern is going to be in the episode and probably take out two Pokemon, potentially, then it's not really going to be as exciting as it could be because we already saw this same song and dance with Valerie, and like I said, not much has changed. But that's my opinion. We don't know anything, we don't know the title, we don't have a summary, so my opinion is tentative at this particular moment. So let's move on to the next episode, which is about Carbink. Now this means that we are going to get Carbink's first TV anime appearance since the movie Diancie, with that held around Diancie and Carbink. Now a lot of people are like, well, Phantom's not going to happen, so why not Carbink? You know, that actually would be fine. I'm not really sure I like that it's like right after Obama Snow. But if this is a capture, fine. Carbink can't evolve. Carbink is a standalone Pokemon. It technically does not have to develop. Now, I already dismissed Carbink in one of my earlier videos because it was a standalone and I felt like it was kind of cheap for Ash to just capture a Pokemon that could basically not develop and not really do anything to battle in the league. But if Carbink is caught and not Phantom, that is fine. I don't really care. But pretty much at this particular point, if Carbink is not caught, I don't care if a few episodes later we get a Bergmite episode. I really do think that Carbink is technically the last chance Ash has to capture a Pokemon that would make any sort of sense whatsoever, and there isn't that much sense in capturing Carbink. 
what I mean is there's not a lot of time left. If Sun and Moon is coming out at the end of this year and the anime is as well coming out at the end of this year, not counting New Year's special, maybe the anime won't actually happen until 2017, the first Thursday in January of 2017. That's fine. But even so, we still do not have a lot of episodes. Because, of course, the New Year's break, who knows how many breaks we're going to get because this year and a little bit of last year of 2015, we had a couple of random breaks here because of the New Year special. I think we had two breaks in a row or one break episode in a break. If they do that again, there's still not going to be a lot. Now, they can wait like maybe a couple of months and have all of these fillers in the meantime, but as we all know, that would be the first since, of course, Pokemon have always aired their anime at the exact same time around. Like, you know, like if the games come out Saturday, then the following Thursday is going to be the first episode of the new generation. So my point is we do not have a lot of episodes left until Sun and Moon. So extending it further means less time for this Pokemon. Now, if Carbink has a split evolution or mega evolution in Sun and Moon, or maybe even Bergmite that would justify a late capture, I am going to be upset if Ash just captures a random Pokemon just for the sake of capturing it, just so he has six Pokemon. Which is why, and I realize it's not going to happen, I'd like to be proven wrong, but it's why I don't think Ash is going to capture a Phantom. And because I don't think Ash is going to capture a Phantom, I feel like it's too late. I feel like Phantom is basically the last chance that Ash could capture a Pokemon reasonably enough to prepare for the league. Because like I said, one of the criticisms when all of this is said and done is going to be the lack of team focus on Ash's team when it really needed a lot of focus in general, in terms of quantity. Now, a lot of people, and this relates to the gym battle, will say quality, quality, quantity, not quantity, quality. The problem is, it could be the best quality video ever. The problem is, due to the lack of quantity, it's always going to have that boredom factor. It's going to be like, that's it. That's all you're going to do. That is all you're going to give us is just that. It was great and everything like that, but we should have gotten more. You know, like, in terms of the Unova League, we didn't have quality. We didn't even have quantity. We had just a mess. Now, my personal belief is that there is no reason to sacrifice either quality or quantity for the other. You don't have to sacrifice quality so you can have quantity, and you don't have to sacrifice quantity to have quality. If you do that, you are lazy, because a really good person, a really skilled person, would try to make sure that something is both quality good and quantity good. So, like I said, capturing a Pokemon late is neither beneficial quality-wise nor quantity-wise, which is why I don't really want these late captured. But if I had to choose a Pokemon as a late capture because I can't get the one that I really want, I will accept Carbink. If Carbink is a capture, I will accept it. The first fairy type Ash will get, that's fine. It will be an interesting Pokemon. It has one of the best defenses. So anyway, sorry, I was a little distracted, so I lost my train of thought, so... I'm not entirely sure what I'm trying to say anymore because I was distracted. So, basically, either this or nothing, basically, in regards to capturing a Pokemon for Ash. Too little, too late. Writers, producers, don't even bother. So, this could be a capture or it could just be a filler. Maybe it'll be an episode about Sawyer or another rival or something of that nature. Maybe it'll be Noivern battling. Speaking of Noivern, we will get into that in just a moment. But first, 
the next episode, Panchamp. Now, in the forums, I was a little upset. In the for yeah, I was very upset about this, and I think I came off the wrong way. I, I came off as a whiny brat, and I realized that I do that sometimes, but especially in the forums. But my issue wasn't necessarily that Pancham couldn't get focus. It's just that I don't see the point in giving it meaningless focus. And by meaningless, of course, if you've seen the forums, by meaningless I, of course, mean that... It does not benefit Pancham or Serena or the entire X, Y, and Z series to give Pancham focus. It really doesn't. That being said, I will wait until we get an episode title and summary, and maybe this is about Pancham protecting Puny Chan from Team Flare, which would be a really nice touch. If this is just personal character development for Pan Cham. The way Pan Cham was treated in Master Class, this is coming at the worst possible time. But hey, if we need a break in monotony from all of these Ash episodes that we're probably going to get, then fine. Whatever. This could have easily been after the Ash Greninja episode, unless of course Carbink has been caught, or maybe Phantom was caught and is actually in the episode, which might explain it, but the thing is this episode episode should have been conceived before this particular time, which would necessitate, necessitate those particular Pokemon. Like I said, I'm not against focus, I'm just against meaningless focus at improper times. And this is one of them. If this was Brakeson or Sylveon, I, th I don't think I'd be upset because they did kind of get a lot of focus before the Masterclass. Pancham didn't. The only focus that we've got of Pancham recently is just its buddy-budding relationship with Clemence Chespin. We didn't really get anything. In fact, the last real Pancham moment that I remember getting that we really got where it was really kind of a lot about Pancham was when Brakeson broke its twig and we had to deal with all that. And that was primarily about Brakeson over Pancham. I'm just saying wrong priorities at the wrong time is all I'm going to say about this particular episode. But like I said, tentative opinion until we get more information. So let's, of course, move on to the next episode, and uh, this is where I bring back Neuver. This episode has Charizard in it. Now, there are three possibilities. Well, four possibilities, actually. Ash, Alon, Trevor, random character. That's what these Charizard could be. Now, if this is Alon, there is only a couple of situations that I would be okay with this being a thing. Alon describing his history with Charizard to Ash and company as long as Ash tells Alon about his Charizard. If not, needless, pointless, don't know why we need some sort of exposition about Alon and his Charizard. Trevor would be great. After all of this Alon-focused time and Sawyer-focused Maybe it's time to bring back T Trevor and reveal that he does have Charizard and he has quite a few badges and is about ready to enter the uh, the Kalos League so that we can expect to see him. Or at least give us an explanation that he's actually not going to appear in the Kalos League because he doesn't think he has a lot of time, but at least reveal that he has a Charizard. Maybe even show off Charizard Y. That would also be fine. Ashes. Now, a lot of people are dismissing this because they think that they would that they would hype up Charizard's appearance. Here's the thing: even in Best Wishes, it was basically a month before we actually knew that it was going to be Ashes Charizard, and that was after the opening, after a title, and after summary. 
it took 12 days after the title and summary of the Charizard Returns episode before we had 110% confirmation that Ash's Charizard was going to come back or the episode in general was going to be about Ash's Charizard. So considering that all we have is a data broadcast Pokemon of Charizard that we technically shouldn't have, that alone says that we can't exclude the possibility that it's Ash's Charizard. Especially in consideration that Ash only has five Pokemon currently. If he, of course, captures Phantom or Carbink, then it doesn't really matter. So then we get into the final possibility of it being a random characters. Along, along with it being Trevor's or a random characters, Charizard, maybe we can get a battle with Noivern. Maybe it'll be Noivern versus Charizard. Obviously, that means if it was Alon's Charizard, Noivern probably wouldn't be in the episode, maybe, or it would be excluded. Or maybe this is um, after, maybe this is the third Mega Greninja versus Charizard episode again. But anyway, if this is just a random Charizard not relating to Alon or even Ash, I would definitely want this to be a Noivern focused episode so that Noivern can get a lot of battling focus and at least maybe get a victory before it gets into the Pokemon League. Please give Noivern an official battle before we get into the League. Please. But I'm not really sure what's going to happen right now. Like I said, my opinions are tentative. We'll just have to wait until the episode titles and summaries come out before I discuss further. So anyway, thank you for watching this particular video. I'm Dustin Benzel, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.